Retired Victorinox Spartan Swiss Army knife will be overhauled to include cleaning, sharpening, and adding new scales, a lanyard, and a compass. With the exception of new scales, all the materials used for this overhaul might be found in your home or locally. No power tools are used. And finally, we'll use basic STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It appears the main blade has no major dings on the edge, but shows minor scratches, as do the other tools. The red scales, or sides of the knife, are dull and pitted. Washing the knife in warm, soapy water using brushes and cotton swabs. I dry and lubricate with either a food safe NSF H1 oil or a food safe mineral oil. The main blade and other tools show minor scratches. I hold the blade against a flat surface to minimize injury and not damage the blade. Starting with a 1200 grit wet dry sandpaper to remove these scratches. Once the scratches are removed, I use a 2000 grit paper to remove the scratches I made from the 1200 grit paper. I finish by buffing with automotive rubbing compound and then less abrasive automotive polishing compound. I could substitute the compounds with perhaps a 2500 grit paper or even such abrasives as toothpaste and then a less abrasive baking soda. The blades need to be sharpened at a specific angle for the best cutting action. Victorinox, like many other manufacturers, recommends that blades be held at about 15 to 20 degrees to the surface of the abrasive. So how do we hold the blade at about 15 degrees from the grinding surface? One way is to buy a sharpener that holds the knife at the proper angle, but the goal here is to use simple tools to overhaul this knife. The abrasives will therefore be sandpaper and some sort of simple tool that sets a 15 degree sharpening angle. Using some machine shop math, I can determine the height E from the grinding surface. I measure D, the width of the blade, to be about 12 millimeters. E equals D times the sine of A, or E equals the 12 millimeters times the sine of 15 degrees, giving the result of 3.1 millimeters. Therefore, when the back of the blade is raised 3.1 millimeters, it is being held at about 15 degrees. Here's a bonus question. I measure the width D of the small blade on the knife as 9 millimeters. If we use 3.1 millimeters for E, then is the angle A that we hold the blade still within the manufacturer's recommendation of 15 to 20 degrees? What then is an easy way to set the back of the blade to about 3.1 millimeters from the grinding surface? A method described by the Boy Scouts is a simple two penny jig that raises the back of the blade by that 3.1 millimeters. Showing two pennies glued with a small bit of paper between the pennies and the blade. The added glue and the paper make it easier to launch the blade, especially when first learning this method. The sharpening surface is made using smooth and straight length of wood. Next, pieces of varying grit wet dry sandpaper are cut to fit. These are lightly glued to the wood. Wet dry paper can be used with water as a lubricant and to flush debris. Grits I'm using are 500, 1200, and 2000, and the grits don't have to be exactly as I use. I use the two pennies to set the angle and assure the edge is in contact with the sharpening surface. I apply light even pressure and sweep the blade across the surface of the abrasive. After several passes in each direction, I closely examine the cutting edge. I don't want to see any dings on the blade edge. Rather, I'm looking for a consistently sharp and shiny edge having the same width along the entire length of the blade. If so, I move to the next finer paper and repeat the process. And of course, it is always pleasant to do the slice the paper test at the end of the sharpening. The blade should slice the paper easily and consistently along the full length of the blade without any tearing. Although the scales have taken a nice polish, there are still a few deeper dings that can't be removed. It's a good reminder that we get dinged and scarred as we go through life but can still keep a sharp edge. I will, however, upgrade to a Spartan Plus for the person receiving this knife the plus being the addition of a pen that is held in a knife scale. 
I'm using a wristwatch cover removal tool to remove the scales, but the can opener tool or even a long thin screwdriver can be inserted into the tweezer slot to remove the scale. This first scale is really tight, but a good example of how persistence does pay off. There are three rivets holding the scale, and I move from one end to the other. I give the knife a good washing and drying, making sure that all the plastic has been removed from the rivet studs extending from the case. This is also a good opportunity to remove dings from the edges of the aluminum separators. I'm using 1200 grit paper. If I were putting on transparent scales, I could also polish the aluminum sides as they are visible through the scales. The new scales might click into place but will typically require some additional compression to assure they're completely flush with the mating surfaces. I'm using a vise with felt padding to apply even but not excessive pressure across the scales. Now if you don't have a similar vise, then padded C-clamps or pliers can be used, making sure you place these over each rivet. New tools should fit snugly. The lanyard or diamond knot is a nice addition to the knife. I'm using 550 paracord, but any cord can be used as long as it's reasonably flexible. The small split ring is from the knife and it's more easily placed on the cord at this time. The cord is looped around two fingers with the rightmost paracord leg. Make a loop exactly as it appears, placing the loop above the other paracord leg. Bring that second leg around and into the loop, under the paracord, and back up out of the loop. This creates a rather elegant looking figure eight. Pay special attention to the diamond created in the middle of the figure eight. Bring one paracord leg around and up through the diamond shape hole. Repeat this with the other leg of the paracord. Pull the two legs of the paracord and the knot begins to form. It will require some tugging and kneading to properly form the knot. But once a knot is formed, the ends of the paracord can be cut and either melted with a lighter or hot knife cutter. The split ring can be then reattached to the knife.
How about making a compass? Most metals are not magnetic. Some common exceptions are iron, nickel, and cobalt. The straight pin containing iron has atoms in random alignment to one another, causing their magnetic fields to cancel each other out. Exposing the straight pin to a strong magnetic field causes the atoms to align. I rub a magnet against the pin five to ten times. Always rub in the same direction. The needle is now magnetized. A rare earth magnet or even a flat refrigerator magnet can be used. Let's test it. I place the magnetized straight pin on a tiny leaf, allowing it to float in water. Check the north to south alignment with, of the straight pin with a compass. The magnetized straight pin has aligned itself with Earth's magnetic poles. These magnetic poles are not the same as Earth's rotational axis. And this difference along with variations in the Earth's magnetic field is called the declination. The declination is often provided on good maps for improved compass navigation. Here's a bonus question. If we do not have the compass to compare for north and south orientation, how can we tell which end of the pin is pointed north? And here's a possible hint of the solution. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. The last part of the science in the STEM deals with resilience. Resilience is developing using skills that manage challenges and stress in the best way. One way is by practicing positive coping skills, and several positive coping skills were used in overhauling the knife. The way I perceive things is shaped by my beliefs. If my belief changes, then I see things differently. When I encounter a challenge, I have choices to make. Sometimes a challenge can be made more manageable. Other times, I change a belief to develop a better attitude dealing with the challenge. Here my challenge was to overhaul a worn knife, and I made the challenge more workable by setting a manageable goal. That is, the knife is overhauled using common, simple tools. Persistence encourages me to make change and build belief that I can reach my goal. Creating a reachable goal is one way to build the belief a challenge can be met. The steps describe the actions that are needed to reach the goal. I create as many steps as needed so that I can see I'm making progress. If I see progress, then I'm likely to persist. Bonus question. If you were to spend the night in the woods using only your overhauled knife, who would you want to have with you and why? We will define social support system as two more people who can work together to solve a challenge. And we call it a system because each person has a role to play to help solve the challenge. So what skills or qualities would those in your support system have in order to turn that challenge into an enjoyable experience? That's the power of a social support system. Look in the description for more information to include how best to adapt and use your knife. Ciao.